first of all, I want to thank everybody for being here and supporting us. Um, it's a great time to be a part of uh, Rutgers Scarlet Knights program. I mean, if you think about it, our, our field hockey team uh, won the first Big Ten championship, Big Ten tournament championship. Our soccer team uh, won the first Big Ten uh, regular season championship for Rutgers. And it's just a great time to be here at Scarlet, be a Scarlet Knight. Um, we're, we're looking forward to the challenge for the entire year. Um, we're happy about our young ladies. Um, they played with great effort today. They played with a lot of passion. We didn't make a lot of shots, but uh, those things are going to come in time. And so we're just proud of their effort, and we're just thankful that we got the W today. Start with James Tim, I, I looked it up. I think it's the first time you've had a win to your name since almost 20 years ago, yeah. Horizon League quarterfinals. Yes, Does yes. it feel different? I know mean, you've been in this spot before, but to know that it's it's your team the rest of the way, the whole way. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I don't think it feels any different. Um, the, the, honestly, it's kind of like a uh, professor uh, that goes on a sabbatical for a year. And when they're going to take a year sabbatical, they always find somebody to house sit for them. And the worst thing in the world for the person who's house sitting for them when they come back off of the sabbatical that you move the furniture around, you've taken a couple pictures off the wall, and you decorate the house the way you wanted it to look. Our challenge right now is to make sure when Coach come back off for her time uh, that the house looked the same. The furniture should be in the same place. The pictures should be in the same place. Um, our job is, you know, even though I got, I got credit for the win, but it's all about Coach. It's all about us doing the things that she asked us of, of us to do. And we continue to work hard and trying to get a little better. Uh, but uh, the, challenge is, the challenge is real, though. Um, we're not, we're not, we're not going to back away from that. This is a challenge. We got 13 young people who have never, ever gone through a summer workout until this year. So the challenge is real. Um, but we're looking forward to the challenge because we got to get better every day. Yeah, Coach, what did St. Peter's do today defensively that you know, really made you guys struggle out there. It was a turnover heavy game for both sides. Was it, you know, first game kind of, you know, getting the rust off or, you know, was it a mix of, you know, new people, new programs, stuff like that? I think it's a, it's a, it's a combination of, of both. Uh, one, we have, we have a, a lot of young ladies who have played significant minutes at, minutes at other places. Uh, here at Rutgers, we want to share the basketball. And so we had 25 turnovers. I would, before I watched the film, I would probably think that 18 of those 25 came on the strong side of the floor. And we, we talk about we got to move the ball from side to side to side in order to get good shots. And because we was greedy and wanted the shot on the first opportunity on the strong side, then we start turning it over. Um, so when we look at our turnovers, we probably had about 18 of the 25 on the strong side. Now, that's that's them learning how to become a Rutgers basketball player. That that's what they got to learn. What they haven't, you know, when you when you're the person that's always got the ball in your hand, and you you want to make plays like uh, Lacia Petrie wants to make plays. You know, Victoria Victoria Mar Mars want to make plays. Ash Brown they want to make plays. They got to learn to make plays within the team, and they got to learn how to share the basketball. Once they learn how to share the basketball, they will make plays. And so that's what we got to do. So it really, I credit them for their, their you know, St. Peter's for their pressure. But I know that we got to go back tomorrow and realize that we got to move the ball from side to side and turn it over. Um, so we're going to stick to stay with the course. We're not going to slow it down. Because we thought about it for a period of time, like making us pass it like five times before we shoot it. Um, but we decided to just stick with it and see if they could grow, learn through the growing pains. So this is for Liz. Can you talk about the girl team effort with 11 players scoring and you getting a career high with five assists? Um, I feel like 
like Coach Eman said, we have to share the ball more. So it's like we all know we can score, but it's like how can we set our teammates up to be better and put them in positions to score? So um, I feel like once we get better at that, then we'll be better as a team. But like Coach Eman said, we have a lot of you know um, guards who are used to scoring. So now it's how can we, within our Rutgers offense, be able to share the ball and be able to put numbers on the board at the same time. And then this is for Osh. Um, what was your first Rutgers home game experience like? Um, it's different, especially from uh, coming from Ball State. Um, at Ball State, I was the star player. Like I got the shots. I took all the shots. Um, everybody looked for me to do everything. Now it's like a team effort. I have to share the ball. I have to learn how to share the ball. Um, like Coach Eman said, I got to learn that me just making plays by myself is not about to be the key thing here. It's me sharing the ball, and then I can make plays out of that once I share the ball. Yeah, Ash, just to sort of follow up on that, you're one of the eight newcomers on this team, and it seemed like even as the game went on, you guys sort of figured out playing together. Mm -hmm. From your perspective, what was that like, figuring it out with the different rotations and your new teammates on the court? Um, definitely different, uh, especially Coming from Ball State four years, uh, playing with them and knowing that they needed me more than anything uh, to score, um, knowing that I, a lot of pressure is taken off of me. Uh, it's not just me. Everybody's not dependent on Osh to do rebounding and scoring at the same time, winning the game. It's maybe one day Liz is going off, then Ty. Like, it's not just me anymore. It's the whole team, and it's me sharing the ball. We'll go to the computer land. Tim Catalfamo, you're up next. Oh, sure. Oh, and uh, wait, could, Ash, sorry, are, Tim, could you start that over? Go ahead. Oh, sorry, I was just gonna say, I, I believe Liz and Ash are the players. I'm having difficulty seeing. Yes, sir. The, yep, they're okay. they're here with us. So, so I have a question for each of them. I also have a question for you, Coach. I'll start with Liz and Ash. What was it like playing in front of a bunch of fans that I know Liz last year was a completely different experience for you with no fans here and Ash transferring in. So what was it like playing in front of a bunch of fans tonight in, in your home court? Okay. <laughs> um, it was definitely uh, different for me. Like you said, with COVID last year and me being a freshman, I wasn't used to the um, – just the cheering and when you're shooting free throws, it's everything in the background. Um, so it was definitely a, a eye opener for me because it's like I really got to key in and lock in on specific things on the floor. Um, I would say it wasn't that it was different, especially from last year, but we also had it open to our uh, family members. Um, that was only family members and donors. So it was nice to have that back again, uh, especially being in college for four years. I definitely experienced that, but it was nice having that back. You have one for Coach? Yeah, so Coach, you rotated in a lot of players tonight, and I just wanted to ask you, is that like a strategy that was just for tonight, or is that something that you're going to want to implement going further down the road? We want, we want to keep doing it until we figure out that we can't. Um, these young ladies work hard every day in practice, um, and because they're given effort every day, um, they deserve the opportunity to play. We still haven't found, like, for example, we still haven't really played five on five in practice. We're still trying to learn how to play. And because we're learning where to go and where to be, we haven't even had a chance to really compete against each other. So we need to find out who's who and find out who can do what in what situation. So. We're going to continue with the rotation. Um, but if they will allow us, and when I'm saying it's on them, if they would allow us, we want to play these amount of players because that gives us a better opportunity to win in the Big Ten and to get through the ruggers of playing in the best conference in America. The question is whether they're going to allow us to do that. And the more they can continue to get better in practice, that would allow us to get better. Um, but if we, we don't want to shorten the bench right now. We want to continue to play everybody to find our way. And then once we get to January, we'll figure out what's best for us. Mike, you want to jump in with fun? Thank you so much. You're very welcome, Tim. Can you hear me? Got you, Mike. Coach, this one's for you. Uh, it was great to see Joya Maddox back after being out injured for a year, year and a half. But I noticed she uh, left briefly and then came back. 
Uh, I think Liz Martino also left uh, and came back. Uh, do you have an update on them at this point, or do you have to wait and see uh, tomorrow? Uh, no, uh, Joy had Joy had a cramp. Um, she had she had a cramp, and so when I asked her when she was coming in, she said, "Coach, I just had a little cramp. I'm fine." Um, Liz, Liz. Uh, Joy, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? So, so Joy, so Joy had a cramp, and because she had a little Charlie horse, um, it slowed her down. Um, Liz, when we talked to talked to her walking up here, she felt fine. Uh, so they they should both be in practice tomorrow, and we should be getting better with them. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. It's still too early, um, but the one thing that is not too early is to stop trying to pass the ball in on the strong side. Get the ball moving from side to side. And we had about 18 turnovers trying to attack the strong side instead of taking the ball up, reversing the basketball, and getting it to the other side of the floor. Um, so when you continue, to, like that's something we got to fix tomorrow. Um, but trying to find out who's the best ball handling, trying to find out who's the, the best playmaker for us and the best scorer for us, we, we're a long ways from that. Uh, but we're not a long ways from sharing the basketball and moving it from side to side. That's something that's got to change tomorrow. Congratulations. Good luck Friday. Thank you so much. Uh, Shin, Liz, I, I'm just curious. We, no one's really asked you guys what the whole experience has been like with Coach being out. and So I guess what are you guys feeling? What, what was your reaction when you found out the news? And how do you guys kind of go forward as a team not having her here? Um, with... Coach not being here, I mean, we do miss her, um, but she has a standard, so that's what we stick to. And Coach Eman does a, a good job of holding us to that. Um, so at this point, we're pushing forward for her, and um, we just wish her um, well with her health and everything like that. So we're still pushing forward for her. Uh, for me, I know that before I came here, I heard the blueprint. Um, it's been going on since coach has been uh, coaching. Coach team has been around her for many years, and I know that blueprint is still living through us. It's living through the coaches. It's, we're getting all the information we can off the blueprint. So knowing that even though she's not here, I still feel her presence. Um, we all want her to be safe. So if that's her being at home with her family, then that's what we want for her. Thank you all so much. Thank, Thank you. you.